I never lie. Because I am not afraid of anyone. You lie only when you are afraid. You might think this is the saying of a brave leader or hero. But it is also possible to come out of a gang leader like John Gotti. The Mafia Man. Who was known as the most powerful gang leader in America during the 80s. And maintained a charismatic appearance in front of the cameras with his exorbitant suits and resonant words. Until he was arrested and sentenced to prison for manslaughter. Before being convicted of criminal charges that cause him to be imprisoned for life. Where he died of cancer. John Gotti. The beginning of the most powerful gang leader in America during the 80s. John Joseph Gotti is an Italian-American. Born in New York 1940. Where his Italian immigrant parents moved. Gotti was the fifth of 13 children. In a family whose only income came from their father's unpaid day laborer. He moved with his family repeatedly until he settled with his family in eastern New York where the area was known for gang activity at the time. At the age of 12, Gotti got involved in the activities of these gangs, as he worked as a stunt boy in a neighborhood club that was run by the local Gambino family, one of five organized crime families known in New York City at the time, where he met the American gangster Anillo Delacroze, who became a his godfather is in crime. When he was 14, Gotti's toes were crushed while trying to steal a cement mixer, and this incident caused him to be bullied constantly at the school where he stayed for two more years. Gotti soon became the leader of a gang called the Fulton Rockaway Boys, a group known for frequent burglaries and car thefts, before he reached the age of 16 or dropped out of school, which he later dropped out when he pleaded guilty to hijacking cargo shipments near New York's Kennedy International Airport. He was it was called Idlewild Airport at that time. This was the second time he was arrested, and two months after he was released on bail, he committed a crime that put him in prison for the third time, in which he was sentenced to three years in prison, for stealing a shipment of cigarettes worth $50, from a truck. Experience life outside the realm of crime and constant impunity. Teenager John was released on parole, but continued a life of crime in later years. Rather, he emptied it completely, and his criminal record included car theft and street fighting, and by the age of 21 he entered prison for the fifth time. But he spent a short period before he went out to complete his work in the world of crime. At the age of 22, in 1962, Gotti married Victoria Di Giorgio, then 17 years old in their frequent breakups. For the sake of his family, Gotti briefly tried his hand at legitimate jobs, working as a pressure worker in a coat factory, then as an assistant truck driver, but his career outside the underworld was short, and Gotti returned to crime and prison, and had been imprisoned twice by the age of 26. After his release from prison at the age of 31, he was appointed temporary leader of the Fatico gang, and two years later he committed his first murder when he killed a member of the rival gang who kidnapped and killed a member of the Gambino family, but he left many witnesses to his crime at the crime scene, and a year after the crime, 1974, the authorities were able to find out his connection to the murder through testimonies from passers-by. Three years after his trial continued, he bribed some officials to be able to commute his sentence and become four years. While Gotti was in prison, Carlo Gambino, in 1976, the head of the Gambino family, died. The Gambino family's 23 crew members, and as soon as Gotti was released from prison, thanks to his godfather, he was promoted to captain of the gang at the age of 37. One of the crimes was the neighbor who accidentally killed his son. In 1980, Gotti's youngest son, Frank, 12, was hit by a car after he accidentally rode his bike onto the main street, and the car was driven by one of Gotti's neighbors, John Favara. But Favara did not file a police report. According to what was reported by the historical site, the neighbor suffered for four months from death threats, until he died after that as his body was found dead, affected by the beating with batons, and then his body was thrown from a car, but the Gooty family said that they were vacationing in Florida at the time of his disappearance their neighbor, 
but the only accusing finger was pointed at Gotti, who had no tolerance for his enemies. The Gambino family's activity and its leadership is one of New York's most famous gangs. By the early 1980s, Gotti had gained unwanted notoriety among the Gambino family, as family boss Castellano considered Gotti's habit of gambling $30,000 a night a burden. While at the same time federal agents became aware of his activities and began to monitor his hat. In 1985, the FBI collected enough evidence to charge Gotti and Delacroix with extortion, while other accomplices were involved in heroin smuggling. But the trial the following year resulted in Gotti's being acquitted, of course after the bribes were offered, to the point that the chief jury in the case was tried and later convicted of taking bribes to vote in favor of Gotti's acquittal. The heroin was apparently being trafficked away from the leader of the criminal family. After this incident Castellano passed an internal resolution punishing drug trafficking with the death penalty, and Captain Gotti had to take responsibility for any transgressions of his team, and here Gotti wanted to speak on behalf of his godfather Delacroix to the leader of their gang, but before an understanding was reached, his friend Delacroix died of cancer, and when Captain Castellano did not attend his funeral, Gotti saw it as disrespectful. And two weeks later, on the 16th of December, 1985, Castellano was shot dead outside a restaurant in Manhattan, and of course the leadership role he came upon Gotti, who soon became the head of the Gambino family, his crimes, many of which escaped punishment, and his quick release from prison each time he was arrested, earned him many titles, for his ability to remain free and due to his shiny appearance and expensive suits most notably Teflon Dawn, as noted by Biography, which is interested in creating biographies of historical figures and events, the end of the merciless crime boss. But years of court investigations eventually led to a verdict, especially as the FBI pressured gang leaders to testify against Gotti. In 1992 Gotti was sentenced to prison. He was convicted of 13 counts, including murder and extortion. But by then Gotti had earned the Gambino family more than $500 million in proceeds from illegal activities such as gambling, drug trafficking, racketeering and stock fraud during his tenure as leader. While Gotti left his eldest son, John Jr. Gotti, to head the family on behalf of the family before joining his father in prison, and there Gotti Sr. died in the federal prison hospital, due to complications from head and neck cancer. In 2002, that is, after 10 years in which he remained in prison, the longest time that he's serving her in prison, an ostentatious lifestyle made Gotti dead and alive, as a procession of 75 limousines walked his corpse, for his burial next to his son Frank, he became the talk of the newspapers again after his choices in bright colors and expensive suits, and he harvested millions of dollars from criminal activities and his repeated impunity drew the attention of newspapers in his life. By the way, the movie Gotti was released in 2018, telling the life story of the gangster Gotti.